Hello guys and welcome back to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. Today we're going to be doing some do-it-yourself home projects. You guys have really been enjoying these. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight into today's video. The first area that was bothering us was out here where our trash can is. It just always looks so bad. We always have so much trash and things we need to recycle and it's just right there on the side of our house. So in all my photos you either see this like bright blue trash can like you can right here in this photo or if it drives me crazy enough I'll have Chase move it but it's just been a nuisance so we've been wanting to do this project for a while so let's go ahead and get started. So here is all the wood we're gonna use. I did wanna mention that we did this at Lowe's and they cut it for you. So I'm gonna leave those measurements down below in my description box. So if you wanna do a project like this, I'll have Chase detail it out, um, but they will cut your boards for free for you. So I always feel like that's so helpful. We're also gonna use quick quickcrete to set it. And then here are the screws we're gonna use. I'm just gonna kinda show you all the things you need to get started just in case you guys decide to do this as well. So here are what the concrete screws look like up close. We're only going to need those when we're drilling one board into the side of our house which is on brick but on all the rest of the boards these are the screws we're going to be using. So you only need the concrete ones if you're going to be putting it. We wanted it attached to our house because it's very windy here but like I said the rest are just going to be these normal screws and here's what they look like up close. You're also gonna need a drill as well. So we have a battery drill, but we feel like when we're doing stuff like this, especially into concrete, you're gonna need an electrical one. I just feel like they have more power. And then this is the stain we're gonna use. Obviously we've used it before if you can tell, but we like it. So Chase is gonna start by making a pilot holes. So when we're screwing in, it's already there. It's easier to line up. So that's what he's gonna be working on right now. So he made three pilot holes. We did one at the top, one in the middle, and then one at the bottom. And now he's gonna be lining up the board that's gonna go on that exact wall right there. And he's measuring out where those holes went. So now he can mark them and put the pilot holes into this wood. Then when we drill this piece of wood into the brick, it's just a nice smooth process. So this takes a little bit of work, but we just wanted to make sure we did it right the first time. So here is what the board looks like now that it has all the three pilot holes in it. Now it's just as easy as lining up the hole that's on the board, that's on the brick, and then screwing into it. Screwing into like concrete or brick is not easy, so you definitely just have to do things that help you out. And we obviously didn't want multiple holes in our brick. We wanted to get it right the first time, so that's why we just did everything that way and it worked out so well we had zero issues um so it's definitely worth that just extra effort your intentions are good i walk back to my history into my own neighborhood 
Okay, and just in case you're wondering, the board that we used up on the wall was a two by four, but we're gonna be using a four by four for the post, so we're gonna have two of these. Now, Lowe's won't cut these for you, so we actually had to cut those ourselves, so I'll show you that here in a second. But basically, right now, we're getting it lined up. We're trying to figure out exactly where it needs to go so we have the spot that we need to dig out because we're actually gonna be putting these down in concrete. It is super windy here in Oklahoma, and as you can tell, we have super hard ground <laughs> um, but it's just worth it to us to do it right otherwise this will blow away and be long gone in the next storm so here is what the hole looks like it is not hard at all I don't want you guys to think this is a project you can't do it is going to take some elbow grease and it is going to take a couple days just because you're doing a lot of staining and concrete but it's really not that hard at all and we're super happy with how it turned out at the end so definitely make sure you stay until the end to see what it's like so here's a chase in our garage he's going to go ahead and cut these posts to the height that we need like i said i don't know what all the measurements were exactly so i'm not even going to say something and mess you up but definitely just check down below in the description box and he will put all those down there for you now that we have those posts cut, we're gonna go ahead and start mixing our concrete. This is so easy to do. So basically women, if you make the pancakes that you just add water, this is exactly what you're doing to make concrete. So it's super easy and I know it may look hard, but it's not at all. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm Okay, so if you're gonna attempt this, I wanted to let you know that this is like a two-person job. Not that you need two men, but you are gonna need two people because there were times that Chase, like right now, is putting concrete in, but he needed me to hold the post so it would stay up and down as it was hardening. Later, when we're screwing stuff on, he needed help. So it's not like you need two men. You could definitely do this two women, whatever. I'm not saying it's just a man's job, but you are gonna need two people to complete this project. As soon as you're finished putting that concrete in, definitely get out your level. Make sure it's level. Make sure it's straight up and down. Make sure it's exactly where you want it because that concrete sets pretty quickly. So definitely don't move on to the next piece until that's exactly where you need it. Now we're gonna be putting in one more post. So we're gonna be repeating everything we just did, but it was super easy to do and didn't take much time at all. But basically we're making an L shape because we don't wanna gate on it. We wanna just to be able to hide the trash can but we don't want to have to have a door to open and close every time we want to get to it. So like I said, we're just doing this little L shape. So we just needed one more post. So here is a close-up of Chase actually putting in the concrete and me holding it. So basically he's just filling in around it. I am going to show you here in a second what it looks like when he's finished. We didn't put concrete all the way up to the top because I want grass to grow over this. So we're going to fill that back up with dirt and some of the grass that we pulled out from. But I definitely want to be able to grow grass there. Otherwise you're always going to see these concrete slabs right there. And that is definitely not the look I'm going for. But once those were in, and like I said, they set pretty quickly, we're gonna go ahead and stain these pieces. I feel like this is really easy to do. You can just paint it on with a brush and then wipe it off with a towel, or you can just use the towel and wipe it on there. Super easy. Um, I'll leave the color we used down below in the description box. Look at the beautiful stars. I wanna drive a faster car. So you think you were right? Bring it on, bring it on, prove me wrong. This is how it's looking so far, and I just kind of wanted to show you a before and after of what it looks like raw with no stain, and then how pretty it looks once you do stain it. So as he's adding that stain, I'm just going around with the towel and kind of wiping off all the excess. So the wood won't take all of the stain in. So you just kind of go around and wipe it. Like I said, it's super easy to do. And then after that, we went ahead and filled those holes with dirt. And then I just took the extra grass that we had dug up and laid on top of it. This is gonna die at first, but if you keep watering it, it will come back. And it's just the easiest way to grow grass is if you already have some to lay down on it. There's nothing 
So now we have all this leftover dirt from digging the holes. We're gonna go ahead and put those in the wheelbarrow and then disperse it. If you have land, you always need dirt somewhere. There's always a hole to fill or a fence post or anything. So we wanted to save that dirt. Now we're gonna start laying out all the boards. I laid out um, boards we weren't using just so it wouldn't set completely on the grass. You kind of like to elevate it if you're gonna paint or stain. So we laid down some of those boards and boxes and now we're gonna start laying down all the pieces of wood. I wanted to stain this before we nailed it up or screwed it in because I didn't want to worry about missing any cracks. Um, I wanted to make sure the entire thing was stained. Um, I think it's easier to stain things when it's like put together but like I said I wanted to make sure we got every nook and cranny on this so it was just easier to stain them all on one side and then when we were finished staining that side we'd let them dry and then we flipped them and stained the other side and it did go pretty quick. So I know I mentioned earlier that this was a two day project. I did want to mention we did do a lot of stopping like my parents came over. It was super hot and humid so we kept taking breaks. So if you have like nice weather and a whole day off and you started really early I'm sure you could finish this by evening time. But if you have kids and just activities and you have to like stop and start kind of like we did it probably is more realistically just like a day and a half. Um, just of work and like I said it wasn't anything hard it was just you know we had lives outside of this and it was super hot so we had to keep coming in to get drinks and just cooling off a little bit but if you have just like a free day and it's nice and beautiful you could definitely just knock this out if you wanted to. So once we finish staining the first side, we let it dry for a little bit, made sure it was nice and ready to go, and then we flipped them so we could stain the other side. Um, and this didn't take long at all, and I felt like this was very helpful because once we did start to put the boards up, we knew which side the pretty stain was on. So sometimes boards just stain prettier than the other, or there's one nicer side. And so as we went to screw them up, you can see right here, this was the evening of the first day, we actually started to screw them in, and then we could choose the best side so we'd look at it and be like okay on this side the stains prettier so you can kind of control what it looks like a little more versus if you put it all up as raw wood and then it's stained if there was a board you didn't like it's already done at that point so I thought that was really helpful I am going all the way. So it was getting dark quickly, so we didn't get to finish this night. You're gonna see as the camera goes on, it gets super dark. Even at this point, his light of his drill was on and I was like, okay, this is the last one and then we'll call it good and we'll start the next day. So this is the next day. You can tell we're in new outfits. The sky is blue, the sun is out. This did not take any time. So all the hard work was the first day. It literally just took minutes to screw in all the boards because they were cut, they were prepped, they were stained. All we had to do was hold them up there. Um, we are using wood pieces to make sure they're spaced evenly. Otherwise, you're gonna have like bigger creases and gaps. So I'll show that up close here in a second, but you can see I put them in and then we hold the board once he gets the screws in I can walk away but I have to hold it until he gets one in on each side we did put two in on each side and then like I said we use those boards for spacing so here is the board size we chose. Definitely just play around with scraps of wood that you had. He kind of wanted them a little bit smaller. I wanted them a little bit bigger. So we just found a piece of wood that was in between both of those, but just lay it out on the ground and put those in so you can visually see. Um, I wanted to make sure wind could go through it and it not get like pushed or broken, but he also didn't want to see like a lot of blue from behind it. So I think this was the perfect size for us. It was definitely a compromise and it 
it worked out perfect. So here is what it looks like. It's looking so good, but he did decide that he wanted to add a board on top. So this is an extra step. You don't need it, but he wanted to be able to put like cups up there or just different things when we're outside um, playing cornhole or whatever. So we went ahead and had extra boards. So we're gonna go ahead and screw those in and then we have a nice flat surface. Okay, we're not completely done with this project yet. We have one more thing we need to do, but I wanted to show you over by our shed. I ended up taking everything down. We had it set up just like our garage where we had like hardware on it and planter boxes, but it just felt so busy that I took it all down and moved the planter boxes. I'll show you towards the end of the video where I put those. And I just think it looks so much better. Just nice, clean and simple, which is more my taste. And the sky was just on a point this day, so I wanted to share it with you. But now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is sealing it. So we did this wrong in the past and we're actually gonna have to redo a project because of it. If you go into Lowe's, they're gonna wanna give you this one. They're gonna say this is for the outside, everything will be fine, but it won't. <laughs> it just won't. So you're gonna need this Thompson's water seal. Save yourself stress, time, and money and buy this one first. It's so much easier to use anyways. So I have just, these are the supplies I need, the roller, the paintbrush, and then just something to hold it in. And this is super easy. So you just need one coat of this. We end up doing two just to be safe because it had rained after we put this on. Um, you can tell I'm just using the roller and then Chase is going in the creases and making sure he's getting in between. But you only need one coat of this where when you do the poly coat, you need three layers and you have to wait an hour in between them and it still doesn't work. So just take my advice and don't do it. <laughs> So here is the final product. It turned out so well. We are so happy with it. But I wanted to show you our planter boxes. This is gonna be the next project coming up. This was made with the same wood and the same stain, but we used the poly coat, three layers of it, instead of the Thompson's water stain, and look what happened to them. It hasn't even been that long, so that's why I say do not use that stuff. So we're gonna be working on these soon, but first, as I was staring at these, I kinda decided I wanted to put them up on our porch. These things are super heavy. They're just solid wood, and then the inside, they're full of rocks with the plants, so they're not easy to move at all. So I had Chase get a thing that was willy and we could move them up there. It was so heavy. It was so much work. It was so hot and spoiler alert, they didn't stay there. They ended up back in front of the garage. So this was just a fun little workout, I guess. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next project, which are our planter boxes. So you're gonna need a sander for something like this. Since it already has a stain on it, I'm gonna get as much of it off as I can, but I'm gonna show you some before clips. You've already seen that one. They're just bad. They're beat up from the sun. We have lots of rain here. I will say there was one pretty side on all of them and it was the one side that was up against our, the brick of our house. So that's actually gonna be the next photo. So right here you can see the one on the left is pretty bad and the one on the right is perfect. Um, I wish it would have all looked that way. <laughs> um, but like I said, we used the wrong seal. So now I'm just gonna take that sander and get as much of that stain off as possible. 
I actually didn't get it all off. I needed like a higher grade sander, like one that was more rough. So when I stained these the second time, they went a lot darker. So now it doesn't match our little gate fence over there for our trash can. So I'm actually gonna have to stain that thing again, but I refuse to do it until the fall when it cools off. But right now these did end up a little bit darker. I loved this color so much, but like I said, when you're staining something twice, it just tends to go a little bit darker the second time. So I will say this stain did go darker like I mentioned, but it really matches our front door now. So as much as I love that little bit lighter stain, you can totally tell the difference in this shot right here. But now that it matches our front door, it's so nice. So the only other project we'll have left to do is um, the trash can fence and then all the wood will be perfect and match. So that will be nice at the end. Um, so as you can see, I'm just like paint brushing the stain on and then wiping it off with a towel and it turned out so well. They look gorgeous. You can see them right here. So as soon as I put a stain on these bad boys, a storm came rolling in. I swear it has just been either super humid here or super rainy, so getting all these projects has just been so much work. We went ahead and drug them again inside the garage, and like I said, these things are just so hard to move. Um, after that, I went ahead and took a shower. We spent the rest of the day, and then this is going to be later this evening. I'm going to go ahead and seal them. I wanted to make sure they were really dry. So I think I wore about 20 outfits in this video, and I swear it was only like three days, but I kept having to shower because it was so hot and gross. I just kept taking showers and changing. So like I said, now I'm just going to do the seal. This is just like we did with the fence. It was super easy. Um, I just feel like this is so much easier than the poly coat anyways. You can see right here up close what it looks like um, and it just makes it nice and pretty and just really adds a nice element to the stain. Open eye, the waves cut through me, hypnotized. By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Can't make colds collide Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight Okay, so here is the finished product. They are still a little wet, so you'll see a little bit of a gloss, but that will dry out just so they look like natural wood. So that seal is just to help them from the elements. It's not going to put a gloss on it. It's just going to keep them from like fading or splitting with rain and the sun. So like I said, I have a whole video creating these pots just DIY. So if you want to check that out, I'll, I'll try to remember to link it down below in my description box. But like I said earlier, it had rained after we had done one of our coats on this. So I decided to go ahead and seal it the second time just to be safe because we had a lot more rain coming. And just like this, you can tell it's just super and quick to do. Chase didn't even come in with a paintbrush this time. I just did the outside of the wood and it literally took less than five minutes. So these were the other DIY planters we had made. These used to be on the back of the shed so you could see them from the road and it matched our garage. But I went ahead and moved them to the front. I felt like there was a lot of wood on this side of the house now so I wanted to pull those to the front. And I love how it looks now when we're in our backyard. It's just a cute little shed with plants right there. And then here is where our trash can is now. It's so nice that it's hidden. I don't know how many times our poor neighbor has chased our trash can down the street. It's like we always get a windstorm when we're not home. So I feel like this a little fence even helps him. You can see on those planter boxes there's still rain on them. I swear it has been raining every night here. But here is what it looks like. It's gorgeous. I love the pop of wood. You can't see it right here with the wood door, but it looks great. Now I feel like I need to add wood to the left side of the house. So I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but that's definitely going to be an upcoming project probably in the fall because like I said, it has been so humid here. 
Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do this project, definitely tag me or send me those photos. I love seeing when you guys recreate my projects. Half the time you guys even do it better than us. Um, if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.